Okay, thank you very much for attending uh, this session again. Uh, we are continuing with renewable energy technologies today. So today is renewable energy technologies. Um, we have different technologies. Yesterday we went through the water heating system. Okay, so we have solar energy basically, uh, wind energy, fuel cells, geothermal energy, ocean power, biomass energy. So all of these are important, but more important in the context of Oman is solar energy and wind energy. Solar, we have different types. Um, we are done with the solar water heating systems. Now there is this, what we call the CSP, the concentrating, the concentrating solar thermal power, CSP, and also the photovoltaic systems. Okay. So I will, I will skip these slides. This is just the, uh, the radiation of the sun. So we have peak hours and we have off-peak hours. We don't have solar energy during nighttime. This is very obvious. Okay, so this is, this is an advantage. And this is a disadvantage. The advantage of this one is that peak of solar energy is coinciding actually with our peak demand. So it's, it's the same period. So normally we, we need more electricity during, just say, close to noon, or afternoon, close to noon. So we need more electricity there. Uh, off, off peak periods, we still need electricity, but solar energy, there is no, it's, it's not there unless you, you store it. Okay. Uh, the three types of solar water, the solar systems, I'll skip the solar water heater. We discussed this uh, yesterday. Uh, it's, uh, we have different types. We have different types of solar water heatings. We, ha we discussed different technology, the unglazed technology, the evacuated and the flat uh, uh, blade collectors. So these are different technologies and we see the market. So for example, uh, in China, which is the dominating market in China, most of the technology is glazed evacuated tube collectors. So most of the technology in China is this one. So it depends. So let's say modern uh, applications, if you look at the uh, evacuated tube collectors, it's, it's the dominant uh, it's the dominant one. And we have uh, these also in the eco house. SQ, we are, we are using the evacuated uh, tube collectors. These are some pictures that we discussed uh, uh, yesterday. I'll skip these. Um, CSP is very important. So CSP, this is what, how we are producing electricity from the solar energy. Water heating, we are not producing actual electricity, but we are saving electricity, because otherwise you will be using electricity to heat water. Okay. But in this case, you are producing electricity using the thermal power collected from the sun. Um, basically, what the process starts with heating an, ele an element, so using the solid radiation to heat that element. Inside the element, you will have um, uh, some, some kind of a liquid, okay? And that liquid would be very hot. It could be also steam, uh, it could be gas. Uh, it would be very hot, and then that heat can be used to run a steam turbine, okay? Similar to this cycle here. So you, you, have, you have steam turbine, and you, you generate steam, and you run it in, in, a, in a steam turbine. We have different types of technologies. We have solar parabolic trough. This is actually the most common type. This is the main market, if you like. We have dish steering, uh, dish steering uh, systems, and we have linear fernail and solar towers. So these are the these are the commercially available uh, products. Um, but the market is still with the with the parabolic troughs and with the solar towers. This is the main market actually. Um, some statistics, in 2010, the global total CSP installed capacity it was one giga, about one gigawatt. It's, 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 not, that, it's not that high. Uh, and the global market was dominated by the parabolic trough. So 90% in 2009 and 2010, 90% of this capacity was parabolic trough. So this was in 2010. Today, it's, the, the, the picture is slightly changed. This is the picture of parabolic trough, and this is the picture of solar tower, so you have different different technologies, parabolic trough. As you can see, you have a, a, a curved a mirror. So you have here these mirrors. And then in the mirror you have, on the top of the mirror you have these tubes. These tubes are filled with material that will be heated. And then you collect that hot material, and then you use a heat exchanger to generate steam. Okay. So you generate steam from this heat, and then you run a steam turbine. So this is basically, um, uh, the, the, the linear fernel, the, sorry, the, the, the parabolic trough. Now, in, in 2014, the newly developed parabolic troughs and the tower plants were closed. So, remember in 2010, most of it was just parabolic trough. But in 2014, last year, this is the recent report that was published uh, 
two months ago, it was about the same. So solar towers like this, these are these are very close capacity to this one. The world largest linear filament plant was installed in, 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 in India. So this was 125 megawatts. Uh, just to give you a, a sense of capacity, um, what the GZ is about this capacity, what the GZ power plant is about this capacity. This is a small power plant. Uh, Rosale power plant is about 600. So this is a small power plant. Uh, CSB is facing challenging from the falling uh, cost of PV. So this is the challenge. People were expected that actually CSB will, will, will dominate the market, but because of the falling prices of PV, it's, it's, it was slow. It has been slower. Um, one point related to these uh, CSB plants is that you need to focus the light. So it's not like the PV systems where you just Lay it down in a, in a specified tilt angle. You need to fix. It. You need to track the sun. So there will be. They, they should have. There will be equipped, They should be equipped with a tracking system. So one, maybe this is noon time because they are facing top. Uh, at maybe if the sun is this way, then you will see that they are tilted toward the sun. So this is a. This is one challenge. They won't work if you don't track the sun. They, they won't work efficiently. Um, you can see the capacity here. Uh, this is the capacity. This is the recent report, uh, renewable 2015 report. You can see the capacity of CSP. As mentioned before, initially the market was, or most of the capacity was in states, was in the United States of America, parabolic truck. Then comes Spain. So Spain now is the capacity is is, is expanding, and you can see here the capacity of different uh, countries, leading countries. Spain 2.3 gigawatt. Uh, United States. Uh, this is the this is the total cumulative capacity. Okay. You see here that this this was added in one in one. This this was uh, the same. You can see here the, the difference in in one uh, in one year. This was where is India? India is not shown here. Yeah. This is India. This was added. That was the plant, the largest plant that was added in India. Okay. One twenty five plus. So people are working also in this direction. So this is to show the tracking system. So sometimes you will see it facing the this side. Sometimes it's the other the other way the other way around. It's fed with the could be molten salt inside. It could be synthetic oil inside. Could be steam pressurized steam, and then you use heat exchanger again to 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 to, to, to generate steam uh, and and bomb uh, uh, and, and drive a turbine. So this is a closed loop. You, normally inside this, it's not going to the steam. You, it goes to the heat exchanger, and then it goes to the, the steam will be separate. So the cycle of the fluid inside here will be different than the cycle of the steam. Okay. Do you have questions about this? Okay. Um, this is uh, an example. Like, let me show you an example here. Let me see if I have a video about this. It's interesting. Light is a reflection of pure solar thermal power. 40 miles outside of Las Vegas is one of the largest solar thermal power plants built in the U.S. in 15 years, scheduled to come online in summer of 07 with enough energy to power more than 15,000 U.S. households annually. To learn more about this exciting project, I caught up with Gilbert Cohen, Senior Vice President of Axonia Solar. It's so exciting to see renewable energy on the ground, real, and we're surrounded by it. It is absolutely mind-blowing when you drive up to this project, what you see and the scope of it. Tell me about the project itself, some of the details about it. This is exciting. You know, this is an exciting moment. It's a 400-acre facility. Uh, when you come into the site, you see it like a big lake. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, made of uh, concentrating solar collectors, the mirrors. And this site is very, is unique, is, is very well located. It's very cl uh, close to Las Vegas. It's uh, a proximity of interconnection. Interconnection here at substations uh, next door can uh, uh, distribute the power in five states. Uh, this area also has a very good solar radiation, uh, one of the best in the United States. The facility has uh, uh, will produce about 130,000 megawatt hour a year. This is a real power plant, full-scale power plant. 
that produce 64 megawatt, uh, produce peak power. The project itself has uh, 184,000 of those panels you see behind me. Uh, this is impressive numbers. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's 7 million pounds of uh, aluminum in this project, which is recycled aluminum. That's a lot of aluminum. Thank you, Gilbert Cohen, for the great info. To learn how concentrated solar works, I checked in with Alex Marker of Shot North America. Tell me about the facility as a whole, concentrated solar power. What is it? Because there's a lot of people out there that don't know what it is but are very curious about okay. it. In, in this particular uh, technology, the mirrors you see in the background okay, are parabolic shaped. And what they do is they focus the light on the receiver tubes, which is the array you see down the center. Uh, it concentrates the solar light by a factor of about 80. The receiver tubes inside, there is a black coated, looks black, uh, coated, uh, stainless steel pipe through which a heat transfer fluid travels. The sunlight is absorbed by the coating on this tube converted into heat and it heats the uh, heat exchange fluid to a temperature of about 400 degrees C which is about 750 F. Once the oil is heated it goes back to the power block where they actually make the electricity. It goes through a heat exchanger make steam. Steam runs a conventional steam turbine like you would with any other power block for coal, natural gas, whatever. Okay? That part of the power block is just traditional and makes your electricity. Great insight, great information. Thank you very much for you're your time. welcome. It was very nice talking with you. So next time you're driving down a desert road and see a flash of light, look a little closer because that might be a solar thermal power plant reducing the need to produce 129 million kilowatt hours of electricity from fossil fuel pre- And this is just explaining uh, the operation uh, again. Uh, we, have, we have a plant actually in Oman. Maybe you have heard about this plant. So this is a, a plant that was in operation since 2013. So this was in P this is in PDU in Amal. Okay. So this is the enhanced oil recovery plant. But they don't generate electricity, but they use the same technology. They use the same technology to, to heat water. So to heat water and directly that water is injected, that water, that steam will be injected to uh, reduce the viscosity of the oil and then you can you can bump it out of the ground. So it's 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 implemented. And okay. this is seven megawatt. So this is a small seven megawatt plant. In, in, in operation actually. Um, it has a, there is also some videos uh, in the internet about this one, maybe you can, you can, you can look at that. Um, it has also an automated uh, cleaning system. In the desert we don't have that much water. In Oman we don't have that much water. Have this again. So we don't have much water. Um, we should be very careful with, when using the water. So this system is actually having a, cycling the water. So this system is cycling the water. 90% 90, 90 of the water is collected and cycled again. So it's automated, everything is automated. Um, now there, there is a project actually uh, to have one gigawatt. It was announced recently. It was announced recently uh, that they are planning to go for a, a bigger project, one gigawatt. If this is implemented, it will be the largest CSP plant in the world, if this is implemented. Okay, but this was a recent announcement during summer. Yes. The usage of this uh, power will just uh, contain a uh, petroleum company or just to be uh, distributed? Uh, we are not producing electricity with the, I mean, PDO is not aiming to produce electricity. Just they use it to generate steam, and they don't complete the cycle yet, so you, they just generate steam, and then they inject that steam into the ground. For enhancing oil recovery. For enhanced oil recovery, absolutely. So for enhanced oil recovery, this is, it, it, it seems that it's cost effective, because the other option is you, that you burn fuel, and boil water, and inject it again. This is the other option that is being practiced. But this is a, an efficient uh, method. It saves fuel. Linear Fresnel is another technology. It's similar, but you don't have that curvature on the, you don't have that curvature on the, uh, just mirrors, and the mirrors will be fo focusing the light on the same, in the, in the collector, that collector will be a few meters uh, above the, above the, the above, the, above these mirrors, okay? 
and then again you'll be heating that fluid inside the mirror you'll be taking that heat you use it to generate steam and then run a turbine run a, run a steam turbine so this is a linear fire uh, this is the typical size. It's less, it's less uh, efficient, it's less common, linear fernet. The most common is the parabolic truck. That is the mainstream market. You have also the solar tower. Um, remember that, uh, I want to go back here to the slides here. So some, in Spain, some of these are solar towers. So, so what, uh, this increase mainly is due to solar towers are used in Spain. So solar, solar tower is one of the most important technologies. Solar towers, you have mirrors around the tower. And then basically, you just focus the light of the sun to this receiver, that tank that is filled with uh, some fluid. And then you use that energy to generate steam. What we do in steam generations facilities, power plants that use steam, is you burn fuel to generate steam. Here you don't burn fuel, you use the solar energy from the sun to generate very hot fluid, and then you use heat exchanger to generate steam. And then that steam can be used to generate electricity. So this is the, the solar this is the solar tower. This is this is one example. Um, temperatures can reach thirteen hundred. So very high temperature can reach uh, the collector, that, that receiver. This is one uh, this is one technology. <clears throat> it needs also tracking system. So these systems in the tracking system you need to track so you need to track the sun. If the sun is coming from this direction you need to face the mirrors need to face the sun so that they can collect the radiation and and, fade, and put it in the uh, just focus it on, on the on the receiver. Okay. So this is uh, this is the technology. And this is a view from uh, one of the projects you see here the light is in this collector, so all mirrors are focusing the light on this collector. And then later here you have the generation facility. So later you generate steam, and then you direct a, um, you direct that steam in a steam turbine, and then you have a cooling system. Of course, um, this process to be efficient, you need to have a cleaning system. So you need, sorry, a cooling system. So you need to have a, a cooling system. Uh, this is very important. This information is very important. Um, because in deciding whether you go for, let's say, BV systems or CSP plants, you need to think of your cooling requirements. Um, many or most of the most of the power plants that are using steam. So most of the power plants that use steam to generate power, they are normally located close to the sea. So either on the sea side or sometimes on rivers, okay? And even if, if they are located in river, uh, or rivers, and you have drought season, the water level is not that, is not that good, then they are closed. So it's, it, the cooling, the cooling uh, uh, strategy is important. Can we, can we afford having water here? This is, this, is a, this is one thing that we should uh, keep in mind. Another technology is the dish steering system. So it's like the old, you know, the old dish, uh, old receivers that we used to have. It's just it's just mirrors and equipped with an engine. And that engine, you don't need to you don't need you don't need to generate steam there and transfer it in a steam turbine. It's internal. So electricity will be produced inside there. So there is there is a, a moving there is moving parts in this en engine, and the moving parts the movement will be due to the energy due to the solar energy. And you can equip you can equip this engine with a, a small generator. And this is this system is modular, so you can have a small uh, let's say this dish with its own steering engine and generator, and then you have some another one next to it and so on. So this is this is modular. And remember again, these are these requires also a tracking system. So try they, they require tracking system. <coughs> there was a site with 40 dishes produced one megawatt in I think in California. I okay, have a video about uh, uh, these systems. Let me, let me check it. Will be sold to San Diego Gas and Electric. These are the world's largest solar projects. Each one by themselves combined, they're nearly two gigawatts. That's comparable in size to Hoover Dam, which is more than four billion kilowatt hours per year of electrical generation. The total total electricity that's generated can power more than one million Southern California homes. It's it's massive in scale.
and Osborne says the reduction of greenhouse gases will be equally large. We offset more than four million tons of CO2 greenhouse gases per year. You've probably already wondered, what about nighttime when no electricity can be produced? Edison says it won't really be a problem. In California, our peak load is in the summer, and it's in the afternoons in the summer when a lot of your viewers are starting to turn on the air conditioners uh, and the like. And so solar in California has a very nice correlation with when our peak needs occur. So this is time-lapse photography where we compress about 12 hours into about 8 or 10 seconds. So the systems uh, wake up in the morning, they collect the sun, they track throughout the day into early afternoon at sunset, and then they retract, reset for the next day, and they continue again. Bruce Osborne believes Southern California's new solar plants could be just the start. But we have and can think about a larger scale. If you take a hundred miles square, which is a big land, you know, chunk of land out in the desert, but still a fraction of the total percentage there, we can offset or eliminate all dependency on fossil fuels, whether it be gas, oil, uh, or coal. This technology is also uh, uh, used, but it's not as popular as the other uh, two technologies or two methods. Um, these are two examples, so two companies uh, that already have these systems. This, I think this company went bankrupt uh, because of the decline in the cost of photovoltaic systems. Um, we have also another company in Spain that is making these uh, uh, solar steering systems. S there are some advantages for CSP plants. These are just few advantages. One advantage is that you can reach to very high temperature. And this high temperature is suitable for electricity generation. This is one. This is one advantage. It's the same as the normal power plant. So if you look at the operator, if you go and talk to the operator, it's very easy to, I mean, power system operator, the operator of the grid of electricity system. It's very easy to convince them to accept having a thermal a CSP plant. Why is that? Because it's the same technology, the same procedure. The only difference is that you don't generate a steam using, by burning fuel, you just generate it from the solar energy, okay? And uh, it's not intermittent, so it's not affected by clouds. If there is a problem with the cloud, because of the, uh, especially with these systems, because of the energy content, it's like a storage. So you are storing actually energy in these uh, receivers. Energy will be stored there. So even if there is a slight dip in, in, uh, in Solar energy, it will not affect the production. So the production of electricity will not be affected as, as the other technologies. So these are the um, good efficiency. So it has a good efficiency by concentrating sunlight um, compared to the BV systems. Large area can be covered with relatively inexpensive mirrors. So this is also one advantage because in these, in these technologies you are using mirrors. You are not using photovoltaic systems. This is also one one advantage. Consolidated light can be redirected for a suitable location. Um, you can have a double use. You can have a double use for this plant. Okay. You have energy and also you have light. And maybe you have heard about solar lighting. So here you collect light. It's energy and also light. So part of that light can be directed maybe using fiber optics and specific tubes. They can be directed into buildings, to light buildings. Okay. So this is, this is also one advantage. We have some disadvantages. Uh, they need to have a tracking system. Without that tracking system, they will not be efficient. They should be, they should be facing the sun, and they should always track the sun when they are when the sun is, is moving. So this is one disadvantage. This also adds to the cost. Of course, fixed systems will be this if uh, this would be more more um, less expensive than tracking systems. Diffuse light conditions is a problem. So if you have cloudy conditions all the day, then it's, it's a problem. They cannot produce anything because the, the, their production depends on the direct solar irradiation. It's not depending on actually the diffuse irradiation. So if you have cloudy conditions, it's a problem. Um, the second comes the photovoltaic systems. So after CSP comes the photovoltaic systems. And photovoltaic systems are actually based on the silicon. Most of the technologies are based on silicon silicon technology. There are some variants, but this is the main market. 
So normally you have silicon uh, with a specific uh, arrangement of the electrons outside the nucleus. And then you can have some dubbing. You can add phosphorus and you can add boron. Okay. So you, if you add phosphorus, you will have a, a, a positive. You have boron, you have a negative type. Okay. So negative N type, if you have phosphorus. If you add boron, you have a B type. And then if you combine the two materials, the silicon that was dubbed by different impurities, these are just impurities, little concentration in the, in the, in the, in the uh, silicon material, it will change the property. You will have what we call the semiconductor. So normally this is insulation, this is insulated material. It says you cannot pass through it. It says you cannot pass through the silicon. If you add these impurities and you connect them, you just stack them uh, together, then you will have what we call the photovoltaic system, a photovoltaic cell. And uh, this is the op this is the operation of the photovoltaic cells. I'll just okay. So basically, you have an N-type and P-type, stack them together. You have a junction between them. If solar radiation comes, then electrons will be excited from one from one side, and then electrons need to go to the other to the other side. Okay. Due to this, due to the characteristics of the BB system, they cannot go this way. They have to go from outside. Okay. Going electrons going from outside. From from, say, from N to P through a, a load, this is called electricity. Okay. So they will produce electricity in, 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 uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this way. And the electricity is DC. So there is a DC current. Maybe you are aware of different types of electricity, right? You have DC current, you have AC current. Uh, what do we have in our room now? Do we have AC or DC? AC. We have AC system. We have alternating current. So this needs DC. Uh, if you want to use it, for example, here, you need to convert it to a, an AC current. And that will be uh, next uh, week presentations. So that's the converters. <coughs> so the sun radiation, you have electrons going through the load, and then you will have current. These are the main, the main components. So the main components, you have the N and P junction. You have the N and P junction, so the silicon material with some impurities and other silicon material with some other impurities and you have a base and then you have a collector this is like a, a small wires small filaments of conductor on top of the cell to collect uh, the current and you have an anti reflected coating to uh, so that you you uh, you allow as much solar irradiation as possible into this big junction okay and then you have the glass, the covers to protect your cell. So this is typically um, uh, the main part of, of, of the cell. <coughs> BV cells, this is one BV cell, so this is one cell. You see this is one cell. Normally it's normally you don't buy cell alone. That's, that's very strange, unless you have maybe a calculator. Or, but in practice, it for, to, to produce electricity, you need to have modules, okay? So these modules are having cells, okay? So these cells can be connected, normally are connected in series. So these cells are connected in series. So this is the, this is the BV uh, modules. If you increase the series connection of the uh, BV cells, then you increase the output voltage. Okay? If you increase the barrel connection, you have barrel connection. If you have more barrel connections, then you will increase the current. Okay? I think maybe you know this from physics. Are you familiar with this concept, those who are not from engineering? Um, if you need more energy, then you can have more modules. And you can connect these in parallel or, or, or in series. Um, I have here an example for you, maybe a small tutorial for you if you like to uh, try it. Um, we have here modules. How many modules do we have? Eight. Eight modules, okay. Each module is having some cells. How many cells per each module? You have one, two, three, four. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 4 times 9, 36, right? So 36 cells here. For each module, you have 36. The question is, estimate the maximum power. So what will be the power of this system? Uh, what will be the current? What will be the rating current? What will be the voltage of this system? Given, given that these cells are in series, all of these cells are in series. So these cells are in series this side. And on the other side, these cells are also in series. Cells in the module are in series. Cells, uh, modules on this side are series. 
So what will be the total voltage? What will be the total voltage? What will be the total current? Can you do that? Can you do that? Maybe let's try with one of them. Let's try with one of them. What will be the voltage, for example? Each cell is 0.5 volts. What will be the voltage? You just multiply the number of cells by the voltage, right? So how many number of cells do we have? 36 times 0.5, about 18. So 18 volts, so this will be producing 18 volts, right? Okay. And the other one will be producing 18 volts. 18 volts, 18 volts. So these are, in, these are, these 18 volts are in series. Okay, this is one, this is one assumption. We are assuming that uh, they are in series. Each cell is producing 2.5 watts. You can use some other. So we have here, this is one module. This is another module, third module, fourth module, okay. And these are connected in series, okay. And we have, on the other side, we have another module, another four modules. These are connected also in series, okay. And these two sides are connected in parallel. So these two sides are connected in parallel. This is the assumption, this is the question, okay. Now, we have seen that each one is producing how many volts? Eight, how many volts? The 18, whole uh, 18 volts, right? So this is 18 volts, okay? Uh, what's the wattage? How many watts? Each cell is 2.5 watt. So 2.5 times 36. So 2.5. So each cell is producing 2.5 watts. And we have 36 cells. So you multiply 2.5 by uh, so what will be the nine, nine zero? So this will be nine zero. So this will be nine zero watt. Okay. What will be the current from each one? We have some information about the current. Do we have information about the current? We don't have information about the current. But you have information about the wattage and the voltage. and the voltage. So from the wattage and the voltage, you can get the current. So what will be the what will be the current? The current would be the wattage divided by the, so what will be that? So this is 90 divided by 18. Five. So what will be that? Five. Five. five, so this is five amp. So now we now we know the characteristics of the system. Um, this is only for one of them. Then if they are added in series, if they are added in series, volt, you just add the voltages, okay? So 18 times four, you just do 18 times four, what will be the value? 18 volts times times 4, what will be the, the value of 18 times 4? That will be the wattage. Okay? 72. So this would be 72. So the total would be 72 volts. This is the total voltage of this string. And since they are in parallel, then this will be the same, right? So we have 72. Then you can see that the rating is 72 volts. What will be the current? In this module, you have five amps. In this module, five amps. They are the same. The current is the same. So you have five amps here. You have another five amps on the other side. So it would be 10, right? So this is 10, 10 amps. So the, the rating is 10, 10 amps and 72, right? And then you can do the calculation of the wattage. Okay. So the wattage would be the current times the voltage. It would be seven. So the whole thing will be producing seven to zero watt, okay, it's a three quarter of a kilowatt. Okay. So this is the this is a calculation for a, a system. So if you need more, if you need more voltage, you just add more uh, cells in series. If you need more current, you need more more cells in in, uh, in parallel. Uh, we have different types of BV systems, some of them without battery. So this is very typical. This is the system that we are having in, in our eco house. So normally you have a solar array, and that solar array is connected to the AC system using a converter. This is a DC, a DC to AC converter. So you do, this is the system, and then you can, you can power the, the AC load. So this is the typical system, and this is the most common system that is used in grid connected uh, modes. Um, Another system is if you have batteries. So if you have batteries to store energy, if you have uh, if you have a house that is off the grid, it's not connected to the main public, then this system is not this is not enough. 
you need to have a battery because during night time you need to operate maybe your TV, you need to operate your radio or some other uh, equipment, washing machines. So you need to have to store energy for night, for, for the purpose of night. And this would be, in that case, you need to have a, a charger uh, to top your, bat your battery to make sure that your battery is full. And you need to have the converter for the DC to AC converter and also from the DC to AC converter. These will be discussed next week more in more details. Uh, I'll just give you now an insight about the overall system. Some of you are, are familiar with that. Um, the BV system is saving uh, the environment, if you like. Um, this is just an estimate of how much a six kilowatt system can can avoid in terms of um, emission. So it can it can avoid three pounds of NOx nitrogen oxides, ten pounds of sulfur oxide dioxides, and about uh, ten uh, ten thousand pounds of CO2. So this is uh, this is the emission. So it, it saves the environment. The problem, if you look at the environment, you should look at from the whole the, from the whole perspectives. It's not all good, it's not all bright. One disadvantage of BB system is that it requires a lot of areas. These areas will, uh, will be affected. Um, costy, these are costy. This, this, co this thing is now, it's, it's decreasing. Efficiency is low. Uh, typical efficiency is in 20s. These are the monocrystallines. Um, toxic chemicals are produced in the process when you are manufacturing these cells, you have toxic elements. And this might pollute the water. So in, in the industry, you need to be careful if they are uh, uh, dealing with manufacturing of BB cells. Arsenic, arsenic and silicon, uh, water can be uh, also polluted. And these are, uh, if you have leaks to, to, the, to the water. If you want to know more about the data, what are the data, there is available information in, in some websites here. I, I just put some web, websites about, about the, uh, the data from where you can get the data of the solar radiation. This data is very important. Um, you can get it from the ground measurements. If you have a meteorological station, this would be the first option, of course. It's not, all, it's not always that you have the ground measurements. If you, you are lucky if you have ground measurements, in most of the cases, you need to re rely on modules, um, satellites, uh, meteorological modules, satellite modules. Uh, the very common one is the satellite, the NASA, NASA is providing, uh, if you look at uh, sizing software, you will see um, BB system, BB information, like solar information radiation based on NASA um, uh, measurements, or NASA, let's say, modules. Wind energy, this is the next, uh, the next uh, topic, the next uh, important technology. This is just, um, this, this scene is very common in Northern Europe nowadays. People are running out of land, to install, uh, to install wind turbines, and now they are going offshore power plants. Capacity is increasing, as discussed uh, yesterday. Capacity is increasing. The increase is not as, I mean, the rate of increase is not that, is not very, is not close to the rate of increase of BV systems. Although the capacity is is, is high. This is to 2010. Um, the typical components is a tower, a nacelle, and rotating blades and inside you have a gearbox and a generator. This is a typical uh, component of, of, a, of a wind turbine. Uh, some of you know why we need towers. So why do we need towers? More wind. more wind at higher latitude. More wind and also steadier wind. So higher quality, better quality. At lower latitudes you have a lot of uh, gusts. You have a lot of turbulences in, in, the, system, in the wind. But at higher latitude it's, it's steadier and it's stronger. Um, you might have um, uh, land farms, or you might have so onshore or offshore. This is an onshore. This is an onshore farm, and you might have also offshore farms. Um, what's the what's the main difference in terms of quality, in terms of production, in terms of cost? This is obviously much more expensive. Okay? So offshore wind plants are much more expensive than the onshore wind plants. But why people are going to onshore? There's no more land. There is no more land. This is one reason. There is another reason, actually. The ocean. Nice. Also, the wind is stronger than in the Yes, sea. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, this is actually the main reason. Wind is actually stronger if you have flat surface. There is no plants in the sea, right? Just flat, so wind would be stronger. There will be no turbulences. There will be no guests. 
guests, so it will be uh, this is steadier. It's more expensive, but it's steadier. Production will be will be more. Uh, these are uh, common scenes uh, uh, from Europe. Um, we have different types of wind turbines. Some of them is called horizontal axis wind turbines, and some of them are called vertical axis wind turbines. Now, the mainstream market are the horizontal axis wind turbines. Uh, go back here. So this is the axis that, that we mean. So this axis is, the rotating axis is horizontal. So the rotating axis here is horizontal. This is the um, horizontal axis. If the rotating axis is vertical, this is called vertical wind turbine. But most in most of the cases, we have um, horizontal axis wind turbine. So this is the horizontal axis wind turbines, and you have the vertical axis wind turbines. We are talking about wind turbines that are uh, uh, utility scale. You might have some other wind turbines for small scales. Um, maybe there is, a, I think there is one in Manama. Um, there is one in Manama vertical. Right? In Manama, there is some buildings. Yeah, between the buildings, there is the vertically uh, vertical axis. And I think there is also some in, uh, in Dubai in some buildings uh, using this this technology. Okay. But this is not this is not really the main market. It, people thought that this would be uh, this would be better because one of the most important component of the cost is the tower. So tower is one of the most important part of the cost. Okay, we get rid of the tower. Okay, another important part of the cost is the gearbox. Gearbox is up there and it's expensive. So why not just to have it down? If you have it down, we have less expensive construction and so on. So people thought that this would be the main thing, but it, it was not. It was not that. It was not true because efficiencies are actually of these blades are lower at this latitude, it's higher there. So still the mainstream market is the vertical, uh, the horizontal axis uh, wind turbines. They don't produce uh, pollutant gas, so there is no emission. At least in the operation, maybe in the manufacturing there is, but at least in the operation there is no. Um, there is There are some concerns about noise and about uh, birds collisions about uh, their scenery. Uh, some people, they don't like the way how wind turbines looks like. They, they, look, they consider them ugly. They destroy the, the scenery. It's an objection. Uh, actually, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the transition toward the existing uh, uh, mainstream wind turbines, people try to reduce the cost. And how to reduce the cost? You can eliminate one of these blades. So if you eliminate one of the blades, it will be efficiency will not be reduced as it will be a little bit uh, affected, and the cost will be reduced uh, much. Okay, this is one thing. You can even have only one blade wind turbine. You have a little bit of uh, reduction in the efficiency, and the cost will be reduced even further. Uh, people already manufactured the one blade wind turbines and the two blade wind turbines, but they there were objections from the from the public because of. Of their scene, so they are they don't they doesn't they don't look nice, and they might cause dizziness. You are just steering the wind turbine, so maybe that was the main reason actually why the the one the one blade turbines were eliminated. And they are still in operation, but nobody is manufacturing them anymore. The two blades wind turbines are also eliminated. We have the three three blade main turbines. So these are in engineering or in in this in real life. This is an important constraint. You need to consider the public opinion. A uh, birds collision also uh, it's important not to install wind turbines if you have if, if the area is actually uh, known for birds migration uh, there is a lot of there are a lot of reports about uh, bats for example uh, bats are affected in Europe um, so some studies but people are saying that actually birds that are killed by cars are much more than birds that are killed by wind turbines and birds that are killed by just uh, hitting uh, fixed towers, like communication towers, are much more than the birds that are killed by the by the by the turbine. There are these are some reports and some studies, but still there are some. You need to be careful with the environment. Bird collisions is is, a, is an issue. <clears throat> One disadvantage about the wind is that it's strong at night time when you don't really need much more much uh, energy than uh, than yeah. daytime. So this is also a disadvantage of advantage of, of wind because you need more wind you need more power during daytime when people are going to work and, uh, and so on 
Um, maybe I'll discuss fuel cells and then, then we stop and then we continue tomorrow. So fuel cells, um, this is like a battery. So fuel cell is considered like a renewable energy um, because it's, it's pollution free. Um, it has an input and output. The input is air. One side is air and one side is fuel. It could be hydrogen, just hydrogen. And how do we get hydrogen? You get hydrogen from wind. You can get hydrogen from wind because wind is good at night. You don't need that energy in wind during night. So you just, what you do is that you convert that energy into hydrogen, electrolysis. So you do that electrolysis and then you convert that excess energy into hydrogen and then you, 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 run, the, you, run, the fuel, you run the fuel cell. So from one side you, insert, you, you, aim, you bump hydrogen, and from the other side you bump air or oxygen, oxy, oxygen. and then what you will have is that uh, hydrogen will be separated into ions and electrons. Ions will be allowed to pass through the electrolyte. Okay, so uh, ions are allowed. The electrolyte will allow ions to pass through, but they will not. They will stop electrons. So electrons they would like to recombine with their pairs, right? They would like to recombine with the with their positive ions. So, so they will go through the outer loop and then they will meet together again here and then they will combine. And then the result will be electricity and water. Okay, so water would be would be also there. Water and also hot water. So you can use this as a combined heat and power application. You can use this for heating purposes and also to produce electricity. <coughs> Um, normally we don't have hydrogen in, uh, we don't have that hydrogen um, uh, available, it's mixed with a few. So what you do is normally you have what we call a reformer. So normally you have a, a normal natu natural gas, for example, you push it through a, a reformer, okay? And the reformer will produce hydrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, okay? Carbon dioxide can just be emitted released carbon monoxide is toxic so you need to you need to mix it with hydrogen again conversion you need to mix it with hydrogen so that you need, you need to mix it with uh, some other uh, you need to convert it to co2 so that it's not it's not uh, uh, harming anybody and then you will get the hydrogen and then the hydrogen can be used in, in fuel cell okay. so this is the process of so today we don't have so today actually we have uh, fuel cells that have that are working on, on, on hydrocarbon, just natural gas or some other hydrocarbons. Um, I just want to explain this again. So this is the process. You have hydrogen. Um, ions will be uh, passing here. Electrons cannot pass. They have to go through the load. And then they will combine again. They will travel through the load. Electrons traveling through the load is electricity. It's a DC electricity also. It's not an AC electricity. And then they will be combining again with the will be if you, if, you, if you insert this one here, oxygen and the ions will be combined again with the, with the uh, ions and you have electricity. There's no combustion. So this is the beauty of uh, this uh, technology. There is no combustion, there is no burning, it's no, there is no rotating mass, um, no rotation. Make electricity by combining hydrogen ions drawn from hydrogen containing fuel with oxygen atoms. Oxygen is the air, hydrogen is from the fuel or you can have it from another process. The current uh, is proportional to the size of the electrodes. These are the electrodes here. This is the anode and the cathode, the positive side and the negative side. We call it anode and cathode. So if you need more, if you need more voltage, you just need to have more, the, the area of these should be more and more. Of course, this is limited, so you need just to have, similar to the PV system, you need to have them in, in series, okay, or in parallel. Uh, the voltage is limited uh, to 1.5, 1 1.2 per electrode, so you will you need to add more electrodes in series and in parallel. Uh, cells can be stacked until the desired power level is reached, and you have actually running tracks using uh, fuel cells. Okay, so you can have these. Uh, um, you can you can see these. This is in London. You can see the bus running using fuel cells. It's just an electric uh, electric bus, but instead of using batteries, you are using fuel cells. So this is this is there. Uh, this is there. The content of hydrogen energy content is much more higher than the other content of, of, of uh, 
in terms of energy, in terms of weight. Uh, and therefore, many researchers, many people think that th this will be actually the fuel of the future. So the fuel of the future will be hydrogen. Just compare the energy content in hydrogen per kilogram. The energy, this is what hour is energy. Energy per kilogram to the other, to the remaining other fuels. Gasoline, le less than 50% of the hydrogen in terms of weight. Okay, in terms of weight. So gasoline is 12,000, 12, hydrogen is 28,000, and so on. Um, can see different different uh, technologies. Um, thank you very much for attending and for listening. Uh, next time, inshallah, before we start the, um, the lecture about the structure of the system in Oman, we're going to complete some other technologies and maybe we can uh, show you some, some videos about different technologies. Thank you very much. <laughs>